The first thing is why inflation will crush your 401k. So get your workbooks and we can enter these numbers in. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the 401k. The first thing that you need to be aware of is the math of, so you can understand that, you know, the challenge. Most people, you know, they go to the financial planner. When you think about, say, okay, I want to do a retirement plan. Who do they call? They don't call a realtor, right? Financial advisor. They call a financial advisor, right? Or they have a company selling Yeah. Retirement. And so they sit down and say, hey, let's talk about it. Now, what do those guys sell? Financial services, mostly stocks, right? Stocks, mutual funds, those kinds of things. That's their financial products. And the big thing that they promote is, let's go to a 401k. Now, I'm going to show you the map of how the 401k. The 401k was created about 35 years ago. The reason it was created because pensions, private pensions, were disappearing. You know, we've seen all these kind of, you know, uh, the auto industry. You know, they had these huge pensions. The world started changing, global economy, and we saw, you know, GM go bankrupt and all these different issues. And so the pen private pensions basically got stripped away. So the government said, okay, let's, get it, let's create a program that we can help people give them a path. We call it the 401k, the IRA, and you can save money. But I want you to look at these numbers. We're, we're going to take a hypothetical. Someone 32 years old, so they're just getting started. They put $1,000 in their 401k, they start saving 250 a month in 30 years, and it, assuming they get a 5% rate. Now, when you're putting money in these programs, there's fees. And the, the fees are, you know, vary. Most of the people I've talked to, their 401ks have been averaging more like three and a half, four, four and a half percent. But my point is, we're using a 5%. You have to get well over 5%. You have to, both, in, in many cases, it's about one and a half percent. Depending on the, the bigger the amount, they'll, they'll come down, but usually it's around one and a half percent, which means you have to have more like a six and a half percent return on your money. But we look at this at $212,000. If your expenses are $5,000 a month today, so let's say you have rent of $2,000, you know, car and food and bill, and all your bills are $5,000 a month. Inflation has averaged 3% over the past 100 years. Now, if you were to Google the U.S.'s national inflation rate, they're going to tell you it's about one and a half to two. But I'm going to tell you why that number is not a real number. It doesn't include all the factors. And the biggest factor is housing. Rents on a national level have averaged going up about three to three and a half percent. In Southern California, it's been over five. In Orange County, anywhere from five to eight percent. Real estate prices have averaged about 8.5% over the last five or six years. So you can see that huge inflationary number tied to housing. But what makes that number even worse is what percentage of the average person's bills is housing? I'm telling you, it's 40 to 50% is average. Some people it's a little more, a little less. But when you get a loan, when I got in the loan business, the maximum debt ratio you could have to buy a property and get a home loan was 33%. One third of your income could be for housing and bills. Today, 50 to 55%. Big, big difference, big percentage, right? But if, you're, if 45, 50% of your expenses are just housing, then how much is going to the government? You got federal and state taxes, and let's say that's 25, 30%, right? Then you have that little bit to live on, and you can see why no one's saving any money. But look at 30 years, look at, here's the one area that most people are just completely oblivious to, is we ask the average person, if your expenses are 5,000 a day, what do you think they're gonna be in 30 years? They're not gonna say $12,000, they're gonna say, well, maybe seven, 8,000. They think in terms of today. Their adjusted cost of living, 145,000 a year. So let's just divide it out. 212,000 divided by 145,000, that's less than a year and a half. This is where the overwhelming majority of people are, are in this place. So when you talk about 
a 401k being a viable solution for who? Not many people. Financial planners use what they call the 4% rule. Financial planners with the 4% rule, what they, what they, the calculation they use is they say, okay, let's take 4% of your life's earnings. Here's the logic. 4% times 25 years equals 100%, right? So if you retire at 62 plus 25 makes you 87, right? And so if you look at the actuarial charts, you're going to be dead by that's the time. You're, you're not going to make it 87. Statistics say you're going to be dead at 81, 82. So that's the logic. So if we take 4%, but look at what 4% is. 8,500 a year, $708 a month. Add to that your Social Security of 12, 13, 1400 a month. It's not much of a life, right? That, pretty tough to retire that way. This is where, where the majority of the people fall.